Good morning, everyone. I um, just want to say happy Monday. Hopefully, I am setting this up right. It is uh, a little bit like a backwards Monday here at the Rakowskis. Um, John is usually the one getting on live and sharing with you, and I am usually the one um, wrangling the kiddos, but this morning he is actually taking Kaylee to a doctor's appointment while I am here sharing with you guys. So I am excited to do this this morning. Um, we have an amazing team at Bridgewood and I have so enjoyed hearing from everybody on our team and we still get to hear from um, a whole bunch more people this last week. But I, if I was like tech savvy like Pastor Sean, I was going to have um, some Rocky music playing in the background this morning singing like this is the final countdown. We are in the last week. Um, and I just want to encourage you this morning to don't throw in the towel and say, oh, we're almost done. Let's just be done. This last week is when things really change. You've put in the work for the last two weeks, so let's finish strong this week. Let's um, give it everything we've got and just really see how God's going to do this week. So um, I am Brittany Rakowski. My husband and I are the campus pastors of Goodrich, if you haven't met me yet. Um, and I am just going to be sharing this morning. I'm excited. Um, happy Monday. I see everybody starting to come in and comment. Um, it is going to be a great week. I'm excited. Yesterday was amazing. Pastor Dustin shared an amazing word and um, it was just really powerful being able to send them off to their next season and their next place and we're going to miss them but we are so excited for um, what God is going to do with the McClellans. So um, this morning I get to talk to you about Thomas um, and I am excited because um, if you've been with us for a long time you know we used to do the Christmas Story Express um, and Pastor Darren and I kind of led that up and the Thomas scene was how we ended um, or this scene with Thomas, I should say, was how he ended basically the whole Christmas Story Express. And when I was telling John about what I, what I felt about the, um, the passage that I have today, he laughed and he was like, well, that's just how you picture it because that's what happened in Christmas Story Express. And I was like, yeah, guilty, that's true. Um, but I can still hear the track in my head. We listen to it a whole lot. And if you're in the, in the scene or in that scene or in the cast, you know what I'm talking about. But um, I love um, being able to talk about this today because when I saw everybody's passages, this one just really spoke to my heart and I'm excited to be able to share that with you this morning. Um, so I am going to read our passage and we will go from there. Um, we are going to be in John chapter 20, verse 24 through 28. And it says, Now Thomas, one of the twelve, was not, the, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. So our big idea with this verse is that a personal connection and experience with Jesus changes everything. And right here, I don't know about you, but the disciples to me are like basically perfect. Like, I know we have examples throughout the Bible where they're human, they do, you know, they mess up just like us, but I feel like they're pretty close to human, like perfect, you know? And so for me to see Thomas saying like, I doubt, I'm not believing you, like he knew the plan, he knew Jesus was gonna come back, but he still had trouble believing that. That's just confirming, like reaffirming to me that I can doubt that we can struggle with things and that's okay. But what I love most about this is that Thomas said it, he vocalized it. He didn't just have his feelings and bury them down and walk away and be like, okay, well, I'm not gonna tell anybody, but I'm having a hard time believing this and I don't know. And no, he, he actually vocalized it. He said, unless I see the nail marks in his hands and I put his fingers where the nails were, I'm not gonna believe. He was honest with that. 
And then even more of a, I don't know, encouragement to me is that God came back to him and specifically called him out and said, listen, put your fingers here, see my hands, reach out your hand and put it into my side. He, God didn't say, how dare you doubt? How dare you question? You knew me, you know me. He said, no, listen, here I am. Put your hands, see this right here? Put your hands here, put your hands in my side. I hear you, I see you, and I'm coming and I'm meeting you right here. And that changed everything for Thomas. It changed everything. Um, when I got this passage, I immediately thought back to last year. Um, and I'm sorry if you know me, I get emotional sometimes. Um, to my own personal encounter with Jesus in a very dark time for me. And it changed everything. Um, you guys know uh, my little girl, Kaylee, she's going to be one at the end of the week. I can't, I can't even believe that. I don't even know how that's possible. She's going to be one on Friday. Um, but she has been a surprise to us from the very beginning. It took us four years to get pregnant with Caden. Um, and then we surprised found out we were pregnant with Kaylee when Caden was 11 months old. So four year wait for Caden, boom, boom. They came very soon after each other. Um, and we always said it was God's timing that we had her when we did. Um, she's our gift she has been a surprise from that and then she had her surprise delivery at home um and then six weeks later the world ended um and we went into quarantine um and at the same time we went into quarantine she went into a really hard struggle with colic and i um, john and i were left in the house with an 18 month old and a screaming baby. And when I say screaming baby, I mean screaming all the time. And there were a lot of days spent in our blackout, blacked out bedroom, rocking her, just trying to console her through that. And if you've had a baby with colic, you understand. Um, fast forward a little bit, come to find out she had a dairy allergy and she was just incredibly uncomfortable. But I remember sitting in that bedroom with her so many times going, really, God, like this was your plan to have her and then have us locked in the house. We have two amazing families that support us and care for our kids when I work um, and when we're at work during the week. Our families love our kids and are so involved and they would have been here every day giving us breaks and that just wasn't that time you know if you remember back to march and april last month or last year that's just you weren't getting together with people and so we were just alone and i just remember fighting that doubt like this was really your plan and i remember distinctly one day god looking at me and going you have said from the very beginning that you trust me with this plan that you trusted my timing my timing was for this the whole world shut down for six weeks and john and i got the privilege of holding Kaylee through that, of, of building our bond with her, of comforting through her. I didn't have to worry about work. We didn't have to worry about coming and going and doctor's appointments and church events and family events. Like we literally just got to focus on her. And I remember that just completely shifting my, my mindset and my heart to say, I get to do this. This was your plan and it changed everything. Quarantine started to flip for us. And I remember just being thankful that we got to do this with her because as a mom, it would have been so hard to try to hand her off to my mom, to my mother-in-law, to people at church, to friends, when I know she's just gonna scream. <laughs> I felt, I would have felt bad. And we got there, you know, we, we got to, to hand her off to people and we did have support and everything like that. But it just, I remember that changing. And so when I saw this was the passage and the, the big idea was a personal encounter with Jesus changes everything, I just chuckled because I was like, God, it does. It really does change everything. And what that does even more is reaffirm what we've been saying through this whole thing is that it's never too late to, for a restart. I, this was not even a year ago that I had to have a restart in my trust of God's plan and his time and when I was doubting what was happening around me and I just got to bring that to him and I got to show, to, to vocalize that with him and say, this is where I'm at and he met me exactly there. So 
as we finish this last week of fasting, as we finish this last of week of prayer, Lord, I just want to encourage you guys to bring those to the Lord, to vocalize those things, to say, I don't know if fasting is working. I don't know if this, this prayer time is doing anything and vocalize those things to him and then do it. Fast this week. Give up something you've never given. Maybe you haven't fasted this whole time. Now's a perfect chance to try to do something. Give up something small at the beginning and see if you can challenge yourself every day until the end and just wait to see God respond in an amazing way. I want to end our time with some prayer and I want you guys to, in the comments, list out some things that we can be praying for you for because. I love being able to go back and look at these comments and like I'll do in a little bit. I'm not seeing all of them pop by. I'm seeing that there's lots of them and I'm excited that you guys are engaging and, and listening to this this morning. Um, but I wanna be able to go back and pray over things that you have doubt for. Maybe it's doubt that you have a job coming through. Maybe it's doubt that you're gonna survive um, a certain phase in your parenting. Maybe it's, it's doubt over a relationship you have in your life. Maybe it's doubt of your faith. Just write that in there and let's pray over those specific things. Let's vocalize those things. Let's bring those to the Lord and see him meet us in those. So let's pray. Lord, I just thank you for these 21 days. Lord, I thank you for the way that you meet us where we are. Lord, I thank you that you do not shy away when things get tough, Lord, but you come and you stand next to us. You meet us where we, you, where we are and you call those things out, Lord. When we bring them to you, when we are honest and open-handed with the feelings that we have and the thoughts that we have, Lord, you work specifically to, to respond to those, Lord. You bring people into our lives to pour into us. You bring experiences into our lives to show us your way, Lord. And I just thank you for the way that you walk with us every single day and every single moment. Lord, I pray over the things that are coming into the comments, Lord, and the things that these people are facing, Lord, and anyone that's listening to this now or later, Lord, you know exactly where they are. You know exactly what they're dealing with and the doubts and the fears, whether they vocalize them to you or not, you already know, Lord. And I just ask that they would be able to bring those to you, that they would be able to lay them at your feet, Lord, and have you be able to respond like only you can, that you can build up their faith. You can work miracles in relationships, Lord. You can give them the strength and the power to power through whatever season and struggle they're going through right now like no one else can. Lord, I just pray that you would meet us this week, Lord, every day, every time we have a hunger pain, every time we, we miss what we're fasting, Lord, I just pray that you would meet us, that you would speak to us, Lord, that our ears would be tuned to your voice so that that we can hear what you're trying to say to us, Lord, that our eyes would see where you're moving, where you're leading us, Lord. I pray that you would just give us your heart for our week, Lord, for what you have planned for us this week, Lord. You know what is ahead for us, Lord. You know what is ahead this week as we're getting ready to face work. Maybe work is hard. Maybe we're searching for a job. Maybe we're searching for uh, you know, promotion, Lord. Whatever it may be, Lord, I just pray that you would just speak and calm our minds, Lord, that you would lead us, Lord, and that you would just show up this week like only you can, Lord. And I can't wait. I can't wait to see what you're going to do. I can't wait until the end of these 21 days, Lord, and to hear the ways that you moved and met us, Lord, the way that you're going to lead Bridgewood, Lord. We're at such a, a pivotal time getting ready to, to launch three services, Lord. And I just pray that you're going to meet us, Lord, that you're going to lead us, that we are on your plan, your path, Lord, and What's ahead is going to be amazing, Lord. And I just pray that today, if you need it, today is our restart, restart Lord. And I just, um, I thank you for the opportunity of being able to share this morning. And I am excited. I'm excited for a great Monday. In your name we pray. Amen. Oh, amen, guys. It's Monday. Let's not have a case of the Mondays today. And let's go out and have a great day. All right? All right, thanks for being here with us. Have a great day, everybody. Bye.